system sound. Now I'm going to focus on Vista primarily here. The course I did on FL Studio 7 focuses primarily on Windows XP. And whatever the next version I'm sure will deal with Windows 7. So we're kind of covering each of those in different places. I don't want to regurgitate that information if I don't have to. And so that's the case here. Now I don't recommend using the Windows sound. That's just not something I typically recommend. I recommend getting some kind of third-party interface which you can hook into your computer and use that instead of something else. So, I do talk a little bit more about that in the recording section when we talk about recording some audio, but I do want to take a few minutes and look at the system options just so you know what's there and then talk about a quirk or two as well. So let's go to your control panel and you'll see this load up and let's scroll down there it is, sound. So we have some basic features, all determined by the hardware which your computer has. But uh, right now I am using this particular interface as well as just the basic speakers. So this has a driver which works with the computer. It's not part of the computer, but this is. This smart audio hardware here. Now this is playback. Recording is showing me. You can see me talking right there. This is the microphone built onto the computer, and then we have some sounds. And you can test that if you want to. Now as we get into this, when we go into the actual software, FL Studio 8, we're going to have to choose what we're using there. It's going to give us choices between most of our typical hardware that's hooked up. However, some drivers are working better than others with FL Studio. Anything that has an ASIO driver, for instance, is going to be the best, or one of the best and so you're going to take that into consideration. Neither of these have ASIO drivers. The actual hardware on this computer does not have an ASIO driver. So if we want to use it, there are some options which we're going to discuss and that becomes important. Now, when we do this, when we go into the ASIO driver in NFL Studio 8, which we're going to do in just a moment, you have to keep in mind that how you had your settings before sometimes makes a difference. In other words, if you're out there in Vista, and I don't know why this does this, but I've seen this a couple times so far, I had the actual audio muted. Say I was on the internet and I just turned off the sound, and then I opened up FL Studio and I was using one of the drivers that took control of my computer's audio hardware, I discovered that sometimes it freaks out and then nothing will play. So Vista is doing something that's kind of causing some problems for FL Studio 8, and so just make sure that you're getting sound before you open up FL Studio if you're using your built-on sound, and then when you open it up, you should be fine. But that sometimes can be an issue, and I thought I'd point that out because I've had that experience in the past. Now that being said, again, let me reiterate one more time, I don't recommend using the built-on sound. However, it's so nice sometimes if you're on a laptop and you're sitting, I don't know, someplace at a bus stop or at the library or whatever, to put in some headphones and not carry around all this extra hardware. That's a great advantage of doing that. However, you're going to end up having really high buffer settings, which again we'll talk about in this very next clip because we're going to talk about sound settings there. But uh, just know that that'll be the case and you're going to have to really work around some of the limitations of having audio drivers and design, which isn't that great. Definitely worth a little extra money if you can get something that's third-party external, USB or Firewire. Okay, let's move on to the next section. We're going to talk about some of the sound settings inside FL Studio.